Maybe for you it takes the form of some kind of mental illness. I know for me it's depression. Um, this will not surprise many of you, I am kind of messed up in the head. But in this case I'm talking specifically about the depression. That there are days that I'm physically incapable of getting out of bed, I'm not capable of caring. And I ache for every day to be like uh, this last Friday. When I woke up and it was fine, I could operate at what everyone else thinks is normal. I ache for that kind of healing. Maybe for you it's a different kind of mental illness, maybe it's anxiety or something else. Or maybe it's an emotional healing that you long for. That you have a scar on your heart from a, from a disruptive relationship, maybe Maybe it's grief that someone has died and you just want to be healed. Or maybe it's physical. Maybe you have a, a disease that will simply progress for the rest of your life. Maybe it's uh, a form of cancer that you've been fighting for a long time. Maybe it's a bad knee that you blew out. But I think all of us ache for some kind of healing that we hurt. Now we live at a time and a place where there's a lot of treatments for a lot of these kind of things. I've gone through therapy and I've got medication that helps with my depression, but it does not cure the depression. It doesn't fix the cause. It really mostly treats the symptoms. And I think all of us have been in places like that where we can treat the symptoms but we can't fix the cause. Uh, when you are grieving, you talk a lot about the symptoms of the hurt, but you can't fix the cause because whatever caused you that grief can't get fixed. We know that with physical stuff, right? Uh, well over a decade ago, I had something called pleurisy. It's an infection of the lining of the lungs. Uh, the way the doctors described it to me is that the sac that holds the lungs gets goosebumps. So every time you breathe, your lungs rub up against those goosebumps and it causes really, really intense pain. Um, I was taken into the emergency room, and the doctor said, yeah, there's nothing we can do. We cannot fix this. All we can do is help you manage your pain. And that's what it is for a lot of the things that we suffer, right? We, we can help manage the symptoms, but so often we can't fix the cause. But Jesus makes a promise today in Isaiah that he is coming. And the ache that you have for something better, that ache for healing is coming. And you will be fully healed. L listen to what God says in Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. God shows up, and simply by seeing him, nature itself is healed. That's crazy. Can you imagine something so good that just by looking at it, you feel better? In the late 1970s, there was a group called the Symphony of the Hills. They were a professional orchestra from all over the nation that gathered in middle of nowhere Wisconsin to play in little towns that would not get that kind of music otherwise. They traveled from city to city. And in one particular concert, someone had the bright idea of bringing in hospice patients. Figured, you know, we're, we're gonna give you something good. And all these hospice patients had pain monitors on them because of how great a pain they were. Each of them were paired with a different nurse so that they could watch and make sure that these people were taken care of during the concert. And in the middle of the concert, the nurses went nuts. They went crazy because all the pain monitors went dead, all of them. And the nurses were scared. Did, did, did they all die? What's going on? Did all the batteries wear out at the same time? This is weird. And they couldn't find anything wrong with the pain monitors. And the patients were fine, and they finally figured out that by simply listening to the music, that was enough that their pain fell away. 
That's kind of like what seeing God is. That it is so, so good. That God is so good. That simply seeing him heals. This is what it says in Isaiah. Strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with with vengeance, with divine retribution. That doesn't sound that good. That sounds like the opposite of healing, right? But God is going to come and do justice on the earth. He will repay everything that's ever been done wrong. And that's really scary. I ache for healing, but I'm not alone. Neither are you. Can you think of the times that someone around you was hurting and your response was apathy? Can you think of the times that someone was hurting around you and you went, yeah, I know this was a big deal, but could you get over it? Or could you hurry up? I've got an appointment to get to. Jesus tells us to love one another. Apathy ain't love. Jesus tells us to encourage one another. Telling someone to get over it is not encouraging. The simple truth is, God is coming with vengeance. If he's going to repay me for everything that I've failed to love, every time I've been apathetic, this is not comforting. This is terrifying. But Isaiah continues, Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus was born. We're going to be celebrating his birthday here real soon. He came to heal what is wrong. See, the cause of all our suffering is not little germs. Those germs are problems. They do cause pain, but something else caused those germs. Something else caused all our pain, no matter what the cause is, and that's sin. That's the cause of our suffering. When Jesus died on that cross, all that vengeance that God comes with landed on him instead. Every time you were apathetic, Jesus was punished for it. Every time you thought, I wish they would just get over it, Jesus was punished for it in your place. Vengeance has already come. It landed on Jesus. He's taken your sin away. You are forgiven. Period. And because the cause of your suffering has been taken away, this now describes what reality will be. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Have you ever seen those videos of little kids that are given cochlear implants? I realize I'm probably going like for a bunch of us. So a cochlear implant is uh, not without controversy. But one of the things a cochlear implant can do is give hearing to people that are born deaf. It is a device that replaces the ear and literally hooks up to the brain. And it's often given especially to little children that are born deaf. And you can find videos online. You can Google this uh, video of child hearing for the first time. And there's a whole bunch of videos. Because it's electronic, it turns on literally with a switch. And so a child will go through all the surgeries and get the healing, but they won't have turned on the device yet. And often in the videos, the child will be sitting on mom's lap. And the child will just be looking around. Whatever. And then the doctors will flick the switch, and mom will say, hey, can you hear me? I love you. And you can hear the ache in mom's voice because she just wants their little child to hear them. 
And at least in the videos, I don't know if this happens every time, but in the videos, the child will go from yes or whatever to wonder, to big grins. They can hear, and they hear their mom's voice for the first time, and it is amazing. And that's what's going to happen when this healing comes. Those who are deaf can hear. The blind will see. Those of us that maybe don't run around all that much, you're, you're going to be able to dance for joy without any kind of pain. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool. The thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. So in October, I got to visit Phoenix. I was speaking at a retreat. And while I was down there, I got to visit friends that lived in the area. And those friends took me hiking in the desert. And the desert around Phoenix has a kind of brutal beauty. Seeing the, the cactus and, and the broad sky and the mountains. But it's a wasteland. You know, the cactus grow there. There are bare bushes. It's not the kind of place that you would want to be there without uh, a couple bottles of water with you. But as we hiked, we came to a ridge. And we descended this ridge, and suddenly we were in the shade of green, green trees. And we could hear bird song. And then we came to a stream. See, a stream in the desert brings such joy. It is such a transformation. And God says that when he comes, he's so good that nature itself will be healed. Then the desert, it's going to be green. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No one unclean gets to go there. You ever do something that you felt dirty? But Jesus has washed you. It's one of the reasons why we begin every service with, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You know when that got said over you? <coughs> Baptism. I'm just hiding underneath our Advent wreath today. But when you were baptized, God washed you. You're clean now. You belong in this place. You're holy now. So you belong in that way of holiness. No lion will be there, nor any ferocious beast get up on it. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord will return. Redeemed. Ransomed. It means God paid. He paid for you on that cross. When all the vengeance landed on Jesus, you are now bought back. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. You ache for something better, and you ache for something good. You ache for healing. And Jesus has come, and he has healed the cause of all your suffering. But maybe you've noticed, if Jesus healed the cause of the suffering, why do I still hurt? Something here doesn't match up. And you're right. You do still feel pain, and that pain is real. But the pain that you feel are the symptoms that linger after the disease has been healed. I had pleurisy, and the infection healed. But my lungs still hurt because of the damage that had been done to them. And it took a while for me to be able to breathe fully without pain, even though the cause of that pain was gone. That's where we're at now. Jesus has healed you. You are forgiven. You are at peace with God. Now the symptoms linger. We do still hurt. But that full healing is coming. You're going to see God with your very own eyeballs. And he's so good that even then the symptoms will flee away. No more pain. No more illness in your mind on your emotions, or your body. Full healing. Full and free. The something better is coming. 
Jesus is coming back for you. Now be patient and wait, knowing that you're in recovery. He is coming soon. Amen. Let's stand. And now the peace of God that is better than anything we can understand will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord until he returns to bring you home to life everlasting. Amen.